Hi all, thank you for joining us for the End of Standing UEFI Testing Webinar presented by the UEFI Forum. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Brian Richardson right now who will moderate this panel discussion. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Brian Richardson. I work as the chair of the UEFI Industry Communications Group, or um, ICWG, and I'm going to be your moderator today. We have uh, three panelists with us. Uh, each one represents a different part of the UEFI testing ecosystem. Uh, Dong Wei, who is the vice president of the UEFI board and also head of the uh, UEFI test working group. Uh, he works for ARM, which is a member company of UEFI as a standard ar ar excuse me, standards architect and fellow. Um, Dong has been a thought leader in system software for many years and has led the ad adoption of UEFI technologies, both as, a, both as a contributor and a vice president of the forum. Um, Alex Hung is a software engineer and maintainer of the firmware test suite, or FWTS. He's a lead kernel engineer at Canonical Group, specializing in BIOS architecture and ACPI and platform subsystems in the Linux kernel. Uh, as a maintainer of FWTS, he's an active member in the UEFI UTWG and participates at a number of UEFI and Linux kernel events and within their code communities. And finally, uh, Saprit Venkatesh, he's an engineer and tech lead at ARM. Uh, he's a staff software engineer in architecture and technology group and is one of the Open BMC st uh, technical steering committee members. He's an active member of the UEFI test working group and acts as a liaison from ARM. Uh, he's also an active member of the DMTF's PMCI working group and represents ARM in that form. So today we're going to talk about uh, test topics within UEFI. Uh, validation and verification is extremely important in software. And we want to talk about the role of the UEFI test work group, uh, the open source tool set, and the UEFI self-certification test. A firmware test suite, and we'll save some time at the end for questions and answers, and uh, we'll have a small mention of the next major UEFI event coming up, which is the Spring 2020 Plug Fest in Portland. So, uh, Dong, I'd like to start with you since you're chairing the um, UTWG. Can you kind of quickly explain what UTWG is and what role it plays in the industry? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, thank you, Brian. Um, so, uh, basically, the UEFI test working group is one of the many work groups that we have in the UEFI forum uh, under the su supervision of the board of directors. Uh, I think as Brian mentioned, uh, he, he is chairing the industry communication working group. And in addition to that, we have a number of specification working groups owning the UEFI spec, uh, the ACPI spec, and the, the platform initialization uh, spec as well. Um, and uh, so, of course, with the specifications, we also need to have uh, you know, test suites to verify the platform compliance to uh, these different specifications, right? So the test working group uh, is basically only um, the strategy and the, um, the implementation of uh, the, uh, you know, the tests that, that are necessary for uh, these different specifications. And I'm going to get into a little bit of details on uh, how we are uh, doing it. And so initially, the UEFI test working group uh, actually owned the development of the UEFI SCT. SCT stands for the self-certifying test. Um, so, and then uh, because at the time we we were uh, developing the UEFI um, and, and the specification, and so we also develop. Uh, the certification, self-certifying test for the UEFI spec. And over time, uh, as some of you may know, uh, we started to uh, expand the scope of the, of the specifications that we own. And initially with the expansion to the platform initialization, um, uh, we looked at the, the self-certification test for that as well. Um, but at the same time, there was an open source group that basically started the development of the, uh, the platform initialization SCT. Um, and so instead of owning the development uh, of the test suite for PI, uh, we basically let the open source group to, to take the ownership. Um, and also, uh, as uh, Alex is going to talk about, 
uh, Canonical Group actually started the development of a tool called uh, FWTS, the Firmware Test Suite, uh, which is open source. And uh, it certainly covers uh, a, a wide range of uh, firmware interfaces, but ACPI uh, was certainly a unique uh, uh, environment that uh, the FWTS is actually covering. So instead of the test working group, uh, developing its own ACPI uh, test suites, uh, we basically think that you know it is good for the FWTS to uh, to continue its open source uh, development, and and we just leverage the efforts of the community. And so, with with the uh, ACPI and PI spec having the open source uh, development for the test suite, uh, gradually we in the UEFI test working group think that this kind of open source uh, development with a community support um, is, is a good model to follow. So uh, in the last year or so, uh, we actually moved the UEFI SCT development from the test working group uh, to the Tiano Core uh, EDK uh, environment uh, for the uh, open source development as well. So as a result of all these um, uh, you know, situations, uh, the charter of the, the test working group has uh, changed from just owning the development of the UEFI SCT uh, to this set of three major um, tasks. And, and basically, all of the developments uh, of the tests are in the open source community, and the test working group's charter became uh, recommending a release of uh, these open source uh, test suites uh, to be a version, to, to be a, a release for a version of a specific uh, specification. For, for example, right, so now we have UEFI 2.8 um, specification, uh, but this is new and 2.7 uh, B is, is there for a while. Um, so we, we basically look at uh, the release that we did uh, last October as, as the one uh, that, that we recommend to the board uh, to accept as a recommendation for the uh, test suites for version uh, 2.7b of the UEFI spec. Uh, so the similar kind of things happen to uh, ACPI uh, development as well. And, and we're looking at the same model for the PI uh, test suite uh, also. And uh, for the ease of people ch you know, tracking the, the test tools, we do have a website uh, that, that's listed here. And all the results of the, the board recommendations are uh, listed on that web page. So people who want to make use of uh, the test suites for these different specs, uh, they can go to the website for the latest published recommendation of uh, the test suites. So, um, so basically, these test tools, like I mentioned earlier, they are self-certifying. We don't have a certification program that gives you logos for uh, complying to uh, these specifications. Uh, these tools are basically for the developers to take advantage and, and check uh, whether their implementations are sticking to the, uh, the interfaces definitions uh, that the, the various different UEFI specifications are uh, defining. And it, it's mainly for testing the, uh, the interface compliance. Uh, they're not for functional tests. Um, but the, the, uh, the test actually Sorry, Dong, I think we may have lost your audio. Anyway, we'll wait a second for uh, Dong's audio to come back. Uh, as he was saying, the testing interface compliance- Other uh, entities, uh, not the UEFI forum, can leverage and extend beyond the usages of, uh, of the UEFI forum. And I'm just putting an example here that basically says, you know, ARM has. Uh, you know, we have an example of ARM building a enterprise uh, ACS on top of 
uh, that these test engines uh, to uh, to provide compliance tests for some of the ARM specifications, like the server hardware and firmware uh, specifications. And so we build these uh, test cases on top of uh, the the open source uh, test engines. So this is just an example. You know, other companies can uh, make use of that uh, as well. So so basically, these are uh, for testing the UEFI and ACPI and PI compliances, uh, but you know, people can also use it for other purposes. That's a good background. Thanks, Dong. Yeah. So why don't we dive into some of the tool sets in a little bit more detail. Uh, Sapreeth, uh, could you give us some background on the open source tool set and the UEFI self-certification test? Of course I can, Brian. Thank you. Uh, so in this uh, webinar on uh, UEFI self-certification test, I'll introduce you to what exactly is UEFI self-certification tests are. Uh, what are the system requirements for running this uh, test suite? Uh, and what is the current open source uh, status on that? As well as uh, the build instruction on how to build uh, uh, UFI self-certification tests on your own uh, if need be. Or uh, where the pre-built UFI uh, self-certification binaries uh, would be present. And finally, uh, how to install uh, the test uh, suite onto your target system uh, and the usage model of how to execute uh, uh, UFI SET. Uh, once executed, uh, I'll uh, show you a uh, format of the test report. And if uh, there are issues running uh, the test suite, uh, where should the uh, issue be reported to? And finally, a uh, list of uh, call to action to kind of uh, make the UFI SCT uh, more uh, useful and vibrant. So uh, let me get to the introduction of uh, UFI SCT. Uh, Brian, if you could uh, just uh, Move to the next slide, please. Um, so uh, before getting into the system requirements uh, on uh, UFI SCT, uh, let me quickly explain uh, uh, what UFI SCT is. Uh, it is a tool set uh, for the platform developers to validate the firmware implementation compliance to the UFI specification, uh, which is published from UFI.org. Uh, it is basically a test harness for executing built-in compliance tests. Uh, UFI SAT test harness provides two different usage models. One is the uh, uh, native mode and the other is the passive mode. Most of the network related protocols uh, can only be uh, tested in passive mode. I will come to uh, the details of what exactly is uh, active mode and passive mode uh, a little bit later. It also uh, has scope for integrating uh, user-defined uh, tests, and also there are guidelines for uh, guidelines on testing for independent hardware vendors uh, uh, for UFI specification. The independent hardware vendor or the IHV uh, SAT is designed to aid the testing of UFI drivers that follow the UFI driver model based on uh, described in the UFI specification. All right, coming to the system requirements, uh, what is uh, needed for the UFI uh, CT uh, to be executed? So uh, basically, uh, UFI CT comes in uh, three different flavors. 
uh, one on uh, X, X64 platform, uh, the other on IA32 uh, platform, and other on uh, ARC64 uh, ARM platform. So the system under test must have uh, UFI firmware implemented as per the UFI specification. And the UFI implementation on the system under test uh, should have an UFI shell. And the system under test must have at least uh, uh, one gigabytes of uh, disk space in the UFI file system uh, to contain, uh, to actually store the SCT uh, test log files. Uh, elaborating a little bit on uh, uh, passive and active mode here. Uh, so uh, for running in passive mode, uh, an extra host machine, uh, which is connected to the system under test uh, directly by a network cable is required. And the host machine should have uh, Windows 8 or Windows 10 uh, installed. All right. So now coming to the uh, UFI SCD uh, open source status, as Dang mentioned in his presentation, uh, we had a model of developing the UFI SCD uh, in private GitHub uh, repository, and uh, we decided to open open it up and make it open source so that uh, we can get uh, contributions from the vibrant uh, UFI community out there. Uh, so uh, last year or so, uh, we kind of migrated it over to the uh, Tiana Core uh, EDK2 uh, test repository. Uh, the binaries will still be available at uh, ufi.org test tools. The latest uh, stable binary version is uh, UFI SAT 2.7b. Uh, the tag uh, for the open source code is uh, EDK2 test stable 2019 10. Uh, this is the October uh, release of UFI SCT. Uh, it's being published at UFI.org uh, test tools. Uh, our intention, uh, we discussed this in UTWG as well, uh, is to have a stable tag each quarter and follow the uh, same uh, cadence for release as the EDK2. Uh, it may happen, sometimes it may happen that uh, uh, the EDK2 uh, release may not be uh, stable enough or it may not be compiling against uh, uh, EDK2 test uh, repository. Uh, so in that case, uh, we may uh, postpone uh, the tag uh, by a quarter. As it happened, uh, the October uh, 2019 EDK2 test uh, stable tag doesn't actually compile with the EDK2 uh, August release, uh, but it compiles with the latest version of EDK2. So now that we know where the open source uh, repository for EDK2 test is, uh, I'll uh, just uh, point you to uh, a document on uh, if you want to build your FISCT binaries on your own, and if you want to integrate uh, some of the tests into the uh, existing uh, inbuilt uh, uh, test harness, uh, you could do that. Uh, <clears throat> the building actually involves uh, just uh, cloning from the EDK2 Git repository. Uh, and also cloning the EDK2 test Git repository and updating or the checking out the latest stable tags and then uh, executing build.sh uh, build, uh, script, which is similar to uh, how EDK2 is being built. Uh, builds are currently available for x64 and i32 uh, platforms as well as uh, ARC64 uh, platforms. For AX64, uh, we use uh, GCC cross compiler. For X64, IA32, uh, Visual Studio tools are being used to build it. All right. Now that we uh, know where the uh, build repository uh, for UFI SCT is, uh, these are some of the installation requirements. Uh, it so happens that 
uh, most of uh, the users of UFI city uh, doesn't need to actually build it. They will just take uh, take the pre-built binaries. Uh, so we need to ensure that uh, the actual uh, binary is for the actual uh, uh, ERC64 platform or uh, x86 because the binaries come in three different flavors like x64, ia32, and ARC64. Uh, you need access to the right set of binaries if you uh, just are interested in installing the binaries as opposed to building it from the source. Uh, the other uh, thing uh, is uh, the system should be configured to boot to UFI shell. Uh, and uh, UFI SCT uh, should be installed into the default directory in the UFI file system. And the default directory must be uh, on a read write storage medium. Uh, this is to ensure that the test logs and the test case data are actually stored on the uh, file system. Okay, uh, now that uh, we know how to install uh, UFI SCT, um, I'll just uh, uh, UFI SCT is a UFI application uh, which can be executed from the UFI shell. Uh, it has a number of command line parameters. <clears throat> so SCT uh, minus uh, A, uh, A is for executing all the test cases, which is recognized by the UFI SCT test harness. Minus C is to uh, continue execution of the test cases. This option is spe specifically useful uh, in case there are test cases uh, that perform uh, system resets as part of their uh, test routine. And then we have uh, uh, minus uh, G, uh, which is uh, an option uh, to generate a report. Uh, the report file name uh, is given uh, after uh, the G option. Uh, the report will be generated in CSV comma separated uh, format. And uh, then we have uh, minus R, which will reset the SCD environment uh, and uh, make, make it uh, ready for a fresh execution of all the tests that are needed. It is usually uh, used with minus A and uh, minus R minus S option. Minus S option uh, is for executing a sequence of tests. Uh, the, the test sequence that needs to be executed uh, is specified in a file name uh, specified after the minus s option. And then we have minus uh, u, uh, which is uh, to actually bring up the menu driven interface. And we have minus p option. This is the option where we can execute uh, the passive mode of ICT. Uh, it requires the protocol uh, which accompanies uh, the minus p option it can either be serial ipv4 or M N mnp option and then uh, we have minus uh, f option uh, which is to force the operation execution with no confirmation from user and then we have minus v option uh, which uh, disables the display of test log information on the screen uh, this is specifically useful uh, if we want to speed up uh, uh, the execution of ICT tests. Uh, disabling the log display on the screen will speed up uh, uh, ICT execution a little bit, make it a little bit faster. All right. Um, next is uh, uh, once we have executed, uh, completed. Uh, a run of UFI SCT tests. Uh, a summary of uh, SCT test results uh, can be generated and it can be recorded uh, into a test report file in a CSV format. So this is a uh, this is the format or an example of how a test report looks like. It will have a number of uh, passed and failed test assertions for each of the protocol tests which we are doing. It will also display the total number of the tests that that has been run and uh, how many of them have failed and how many of them have uh, passed. 
as well as uh, within each of those uh, test cases uh, how uh, it will list the assertion ID uh, which is uh, good and say this has failed and uh, it will also display the uh, te uh, past test result uh, by means of a GUID. All right. So what to do uh, if in case uh, the procedure which I just described doesn't work for you? Uh, feel free to file a bug uh, in bugzilla.tianacore.org. Uh, we uh, no longer use uh, UTWG uh, Mantis for tracking issues. Uh, we have migrated over to bugzilla.tianacore.org. Uh, the bugs should be failed. Uh, uh, the bugs or the feature requests should be filed against uh, a UFI CD component of the EDK2 test product. Uh, it is basically essentially the same process uh, as followed for EDK2. Okay, uh, with that, um, I uh, request you uh, to uh, contribute to UFI SCT uh, as much as possible uh, because uh, now that UFI SCT is uh, open sourced. Uh, it's a community project and uh, contributing uh, will help uh, UFI community as a whole. Uh, the contribution guidelines are uh, similar to uh, what is there uh, in EDK2 Tiana Core and the uh, link for uh, contribute, how to contribute uh, is uh, in the slide. SET source uh, is currently licensed under two class uh, BSD license. The licensing terms and conditions are listed uh, in the license.txt uh, in the slide. Any general questions on UFI SET uh, can be sent uh, to uh, devil at uh, edk2.groups.io with the edk2 test as the uh, subject of your email. And uh, we currently uh, are requesting uh, anyone uh, to step up and kind of uh, take responsibility for uh, maintainership of uh, x86 uh, or x64 uh, UFI SAT part of uh, stuff. And I'm currently the ARM maintainer uh, for yeah, x 64 UFI SAT uh, uh, source. And with that, uh, I'd like to uh, thank you for listening patiently. And I hope uh, it's useful uh, for you guys to use UFI SAT. Uh, on your uh, target uh, are the test platforms and with that I'd like to say thank you. All right thank you Sapreeth. Uh, just to note that one we will be posting the slides after the webinar on uefi.org so you'll be able to get to all of these links. We'll also post a video and recording uh, of the seminar as well and also we are taking questions at the end. Uh, if you would like to go ahead and get your questions in queue for the SCT section, go ahead and type them into the chat window and go to meeting and uh, we'll collect those at the end and hopefully you'll get your question answered today. If we can't address everybody's questions, we'll do a follow-up blog on uefi.org um, where the uh, experts on today's panel are going to respond to detailed questions. All right, let's move on to the next subject. Uh, Alex, uh, I'd like to understand how the um, firmware test suite works and how it's different from the goals set by the SCT. Hi, uh, I'm Alex. I'm from Canadigo. Uh, I'm going to talk about the FWTS, the firmware test suite, and its framework, plus uh, how to use it in the command line and, uh, then and uh, finally the FWTS live. So what is FWTS? Uh, FWTS, or firmware test suite, is the recommended HCP SCT as discussed by Dong Wei. It is a Linux command line tool that automates firmware checking. It can identify misimplementations uh, mis for HCP, UEFI, and many other specifications. 
FWTS is open source and it's licensed by GPLv2. We release FWTS monthly except April and October. Uh, that's due to the uh, other maintenance issue that we don't release in April in, and October. Installing FWTS on Ubuntu or its directive is very easy. So first you add a PPA, so you will get the latest version. Then you can run app install FWTS. Please refer to our web pages for information like uh, release schedules, source code, how to compile, how to use, and the bug reports. And we also have a mailing list and the uh, uh, bug tracking system called Launchpad, where you can send your questions or requests to us. Uh, next slide, please. FWTS cover many specs like uh, U uh, UEFI, ACPI, SM BIOS, SBBR, and PCIe, and uh, many other more. Each spec may have multiple tests cover different functions and the interfaces. For example, the ACPI, the ACPI cover test for each ACPI tables, and uh, the same also apply to the UEFI LED. Each runtime, the uh, runtime service has its own test, or can have multiple multiple tests for each interface. FWTS calls Linux kernel APIs to communicate with firmware and the hardware underneath. Especially, it calls the ACPI CA, that's the Linux ACPI subsystem, and uh, it calls to the EFI test driver let the translate system calls directly to the UEFI runtime services. For the interface, uh, most technical users will prefer command line interface, but FWTS also provides a simple graphical user interface called the FWTS front end for less technical users as well. And we'll be talking about uh, each interface, command line interface, and the, the GUI interface in the following slides. Uh, next slide, please. So, so the uh, FWTS command line syntax is pretty easy. Basically, you can execute a test or multiple tests by specifying each test names, followed by FWTS. For example, you can run FWTS test one and test two and Plus, uh, and, uh, please, and, and other tests as well. You can also execute a, uh, a group of testing, like uh, ACPI and uh, UEFI. Uh, I list an example of UEFI as a second example on the slide, but you can also do the same for ACPI tests for ACPI spec. The same also apply to the SBBR. The screenshot here demonstrate running a test for an ACPI MCFG table and a PCIe ASPM, but only report median or higher failures. The log file will be called results.log by default, and we are, I'm show, only showing part of the result here. So, at the end of the result log, you will see a summary of the test report with uh, each with uh, different severity of the failures. Um, in this particular example, you will see two you will see two median failures in the HPCIE SPM setting test. They are literally almost a hundred tests, but you can see all of the description with the command FWTS dash dash show test dash four. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, we know not many people use Linux. So there is a special version of FWTS called FWTS Live. It is a USB image that can boot execute test and the set report to be viewed in Windows. 
The first link on the slide include all versions of FWTS Live, and the second link show how to download and copy the image to a USB disk in Linux with the DD command. If you are using Windows, you can also uh, you also have a suggestion of using a third-party tool called Win32 Disk Imagery. So once you have the once you have created a FWTS Live USB disk, you can use the you can just plug in the USB disk to your computer and boot it up. When booting up, FWTS Live display a welcome screen such as the left, followed by a selection menu like the one on the right. FWTS Live include a number of predefined sets that can be chosen directly from the window. And the most common choices are the ACPI and the UEFI test, like the second and the third on the screen. When attending to the UEF, UEFI platform, I personally run the recommended or recommended for the firmware vendors, depending on who I am visiting. So you can also give a try as well. And finally, you can also manually select test using the option called select individual test. That's the second from the button. This is particularly handy when you are developing or debugging for specific features. Next slide, please. Okay. Okay, so FWTS image has three partitions. The first partition is a FAT32 partition and is used to store reports and log files. The other two are for FWTS binary and the OS and they are not readable by Windows, so you can just ignore the error message asking, format, asking to format the partitions in Windows. And the result, the the reports are saved in the folders named by the date and the time of the system under test. So you can use the same USB disk for multiple systems. There are eight files including ACPI tables, kernel log, PCI, SM BIOS, CPU information, and the test reports in both HTML and the text formats. Next slide, please. So uh, it is also possible to run testing automatically, like a boot FWTS Live, run specific tests, and then shut down automatically, all without user interventions. This feature can be enabled by adding a file called oemtest.lst in the FAT32 partition. The file must contain one line of test names, and it could be multiple tests, or a group, as we discussed before. And the one line with the post action, either power off or reboot. And the same, the same format of a log file will be saved as we discussed in the previous slides. And that's all for the FWTS and the FWTS Live. And thank you for your patience. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. So good information, and of course the timing of this uh, webinar is not by accident. The uh, UEFI form hosts usually two testing events per year globally. Uh, these are test events where UEFI form members at any level can show up with equipment and test against um, other vendors' peripherals or operating systems or platforms that are still in pre-release mode. So if you're interested in attending that and using these tools to verify compatibility with other uh, industry components, then check out uefi.org. The event registration is open. It's March 31st through April 2nd at the uh, Embassy Suites in Hillsborough, Oregon, which is a suburb of Portland. I think now we've got a couple of questions queued up. So what's our first question? First question is, what are the benefits of a self-certifying test program? All right, uh, Saprith, have you got any, uh, any yeah. feedback yeah. on that? Yes, uh, the benefits of uh, self-certification 
uh, tests is, for example, uh, in in case of I can speak uh, for ARM. In case of ARM, uh, it's it's like uh, we have a server-ready program which actually uses this uh, UFI cell certification tests as part of uh, architecture compliance uh, test suite. So which is helpful for uh, our partners uh, during the early stages of development to kind of run this test case and make sure they are uh, compliant against, uh, against the UFI specification, for example. And uh, in case of FWTS, uh, they are in compliance uh, against the ACPI specification. And uh, it will give them a, a degree of confidence uh, to go, uh, uh, with, uh, go with the confidence that uh, uh, by running cell certification tests, we are complying against uh, 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 industry standard specification as well. Uh, in our case, uh, uh, it's compliant against the ARM architecture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. The in my experience working for a firmware vendor and also for a chip vendor at Intel, the value of the SCT it bridges a gap between unit testing and integration testing. It does a lot of the functions of unit test by looking at how drivers implement the the protocols, the APIs that are necessary to communicate with different layers of the stack. And it also kind of is the earliest integration test when you get a peripheral or you combine a, a, plat a set of platform drivers, you can then do the bare level testing of making sure that each one of those drivers is compliant with the, the interface that bridges it to the next part of the stack. It won't replace your total integration testing. It won't find a lot of corner cases and functional issues, but it will verify that everything that you get that says it's a UEFI component, whether it's a PEI or DXE component or an option ROM third-party driver verifies that they're all speaking the same language. The next question is, what are some of the other errors that firmware test suites can identify? How will I receive the results and recommendations? Okay, uh, so FWTS basically tests the interface of each spec, like uh, the ACPI table, so we will check the content of the table and uh, also calls the Calls the ACP uh, control method and uh, to see whether the input matches the output results. The same also goes to the UEFI and the many other spec. In some extreme case, FWTS is able to trigger a UEFI runtime service, like hence the system, or even corrupt the BIOS. So let's and that's why it's very important to have a, to have a testing tool for the for the develop for the developing platforms, and the result log will be saved locally, either on the USB disk or on your computer. So, and if you have any recommendations or a request in general, you can send to our mailing list or file a bug on our Launchpad bug system, or it, or you can just email me; they will also work as well. The next question is, what are the high-level differences between FWTS and SCT? Okay, uh, uh, let me talk from the FWTS perspective, and maybe Sabri can fill me the gap as well. So uh, SCT is a UEFI application. So it, it basically runs in the uh, boot time, boot time mode. It, it runs the boot time services. Even it calls long time services, it's still boot time. And FWTS is able to check a lot more from uh, in other from other spec, and uh, it's the because we run the FWTS in Linux less than a long time, so it will be able to trigger something that won't be found in the boot time. However, we won't be able to check any boot time service. Yeah, uh, adding to what Alex uh, mentioned, uh, UFI SCT. Uh, tests against the UFI uh, specification and FWTS uh, tests against the uh, ACPI uh, specification. UFI SCD runs in UFI shell, uh, so most likely uh, the interface with the OS, like the runtime services, uh, won't be tested properly. Uh, it still does uh, reset and test some of those, but 
uh, uh, FWTS is more uh, uh, suitable uh, for those kind of uh, uh, tests because FWTS uh, runs as a, a Linux uh, application and it can test the runtime services of UFI as well as uh, can test the ACPI uh, tables. So this is kind of uh, high level differences between UFI SCT and uh, uh, FWTS uh, test suites. Yeah, that's a good distinction. If you're not as familiar with the architecture of, of UEFI, um, all of, most of the protocols in the boot services that are used to actually initialize the platform and set the boot policy are uh, discontinued and taken out of memory when they make the switch to runtime services. So having a distinct set of tests that you know, one focuses on boot, one focuses on runtime, you can expose any gaps you may have by the termination of boot services when you hand off to the OS. Uh, what's our next question? What is the difference between active and passive modes in UEFI SCT? Okay, uh, so uh, the main difference between active and uh, passive modes are active mode is where the SCT kind of runs as an application on the uh, system under test or the target. And uh, passive mode, uh, it actually runs as a kind of service where it will communicate with an external uh, uh, external machine which can be called external host machine and the external host machine and the system under test or the target machine must be connected directly by uh, a network cable and uh, it uses uh, one of the network protocols like MNP, IPv4 or uh, uh, maybe serial as well. What architectures are supported by the firmware test suite? Okay, uh, FWTS support uh, x86, 32 bits and 64 bits, and the ARM 32 and 64 bits. I think you also support the Intel PowerPC Power architecture as well. So the uh, when you just when you download it, when you download by app get install, you will install the corresponding architecture package. But the only exception is we we don't have the FWTS life only support for PC at the moment. The reason is uh, a lot more people more people run Windows on PC, but a lot of a lot of ARM architecture are running Linux, so they can compile the source code or just use the whatever we have online already. Great. Can we use FWTS for the UEFI shell? Uh, unfortunately, no, because we rely on the Linux kernel for most of the functions. So, uh, no. Thank you. Are there any performance tests available currently? Performance. Uh, we don't we don't have anything in the FWTS. Uh, yeah, for, oh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, for UFI SAT as well, uh, it's mostly uh, protocol uh, tests and uh, performance related uh, tests. If there are, uh, there are uh, just one or two out of 500, 600. There are a, a couple of different ways to. Um, to do performance testing, that's normally done as a unit test by the developer. If you look at some of the training we have on tianacore.org for uh, UEFI development, you'll find that there are UEFI debug hooks uh, that allow you to do performance testing. Uh, some of that can be done on production systems and measured through an ACPI table and reported by the operating system. So the OS has an understanding of the, uh, the firmware boot time. Uh, but those are kind of a separate class from what the SCT and FWTS do. What's the difference between the firmware test suite and the firmware test suite live? Okay. Uh, the, I would say two major difference are the uh, first, the kernel log testing, because the kernel log obviously depends on the kernel version you are running. 
So if WTS use a fixed kernel, it's like a four dot fifteen, and the length for the FWTS length depends on your your OS and the, the kernel you are running. And the, the second will be uh second the, the second will be if I don't think we have FWTS uh, we have power power uh, features not power we don't have we don't support S3 and S4 in FWTS live obviously. But you can do S3 and S4 or a suspend to idle with FWTS live uh, with FWTS. What is the main difference between UEFI SCT and IHV SCT? Uh, the difference has to do with the uh, driver model uh, described by the UEFI specification. Uh, if you notice in the specification, there are two different driver models. So IHV specifically deals with the UEFI driver model uh, uh, implemented for the uh, devices. So it specifically tests uh, using that uh, UFI driver model uh, test. Can the test outside the scope of the UEFI specification be added to the UEFI SCT? Uh, currently, we are discussing this, but uh, we find it uh, uh, to follow the uh, Tiana course uh, code first approach. Uh, if uh, you are currently actively working with the UFI forum to include uh, uh, some of uh, uh, the protocols in the specification, then we ask you uh, to kind of uh, develop that. Uh, I mean, you can develop that uh, in the uh, EDK to test uh, experimental branch uh, rather than on the master branch. Yeah, also, like I mentioned earlier, um, you know, the the uh, UEFI CT is actually having permissive licenses. So, yeah, if you, you need some tests developed using the test engine uh, for some other purposes, uh, you, you could do that. Uh, so things that are outside of the scope of UEFI specification, even, you know, even outside the scope that Supreze just mentioned, you can still use the test engine and develop the test cases uh, for your needs. Are there any pan encumbrances on the test suite as there are in the UEFI BIOS? It's a BSD two class license. Uh, so, uh, I guess uh, it just follows the general BSD2 uh, uh, license guidelines, uh, which is a permissive as opposed to a procedure. Yeah. So for background, um, about a year, year and a half ago, uh, tianocore.org, which is um, an implementation of UEFI that um, is used by a number of the member companies, uh, was following a BSD, uh, a standard BSD clause um, without patent protection or without patent license. And there was an additional contributors agreement that basically made sure that any code contributed was not uh, subject to patent. And we did a blanket relicense of the project to BSD uh, two clause plus patent to make sure that it was clear from a single OSI approved license that anyone um, taking that code downstream would not have any patent issues. The UEFI form itself doesn't have a patent restriction per se. Um, the contributors also have to understand what they're contributing to the industry spec. It does not have patent issues, but uh, the UEFI form does operate under a non-disclosure agreement prior to the spec release, uh, only because some of the member companies may still be getting clearance for the information they're contributing to the spec. Is the UEFI form planning any dedicated security test tool? I'm not aware of one. Dong, have you uh, looked into this at all? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not aware of this. We do, uh, I think if you go back to the original uh, diagram of the, the work group, so there is actually a, a security uh, response team. Uh, and uh, and also there, there's a, 
uh, there, there are different companies doing different kind of security test tools, uh, but but they are outside of the scope of uh, of the UEFI test team right now. One thing as, as background for the audience, the UEFI form is really concerned about specification over implementation. And a lot of security issues we run into, even though we have an advisory council in the security working group that tries to coordinate response between companies, um, we do run into a lot of issues where they are particular implementations. And um, that is something that we're still trying to figure out if we have a role to play aside from providing guidance and defining threat models. Uh, all right, I think we're down to our last question. When is the next release of UEFI SCT? Yeah, so uh, currently uh, we are in the process of uh, releasing the October version of UEFI SCT. And before the plug fest, uh, 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 there will be uh, one more release uh, if the uh, UTWG agrees. Okay, sounds good. I want to thank uh, Alex, Apreeth, and Dong for participating today. Uh, really good information. I want to thank uh, Megan for handling the Q&A and getting all the technical bits set up for running the webinar. And if you want to put some of this information to practical use, then you should uh, look at attending the UEFI Forum Spring 2020 Plug Fest, March 30th through April 3rd in Hillsborough, Oregon. Uh, registration information is available at the link shown here, or you can also find out more from uefi.org slash events. Uh, if we have any additional questions that weren't addressed today, we will put them on the summary blog available at uefi.org, and uh, the slides and the video will be recorded and um, posted as well after the event, so you can find them at uefi.org. I want to thank everyone for attending, and please make sure that you uh, pay attention to the UEFI Forum website. We'll be having these webinars and other related events on a fairly regular basis. Uh, thanks for your time, and have a good day.